proteins are long chains of amino acids. There are 20 common kinds of amino acids, represented here by different colors. Each type of amino acid has a similar chemical structure, except for a variable part known as the R group. Within a protein, amino acids are linked to each other by a peptide bond. The sequence of amino acids in a protein is coded in the sequence of bases in DNA. Therefore, translation, or protein synthesis, begins with the transcription of DNA into messenger RNA, or mRNA for short. The linear sequence of bases in mRNA is then translated into the linear sequence of amino acids in a protein. Each amino acid is specified by a group of three bases on the mRNA. This group of three bases is called a codon. In addition to mRNA, several other components are crucial for protein synthesis. Twisted strands of RNA, called transfer RNA, or tRNA, match amino acids to their corresponding bases on the mRNA. The three bases on the tRNA, called the anticodon, hydrogen bond to their complementary codon on the mRNA. The anticodon on the tRNA also specified which amino acid was bound to its three prime end. Enzymes called amino acyl synthetases bind the COOH end of the amino acid to the three prime OH of the tRNA. Protein synthesis occurs on ribosomes that are composed of a small subunit and a large subunit. These subunits are made of ribosomal RNA and several proteins. Translation of mRNA into protein occurs in three stages. Initiation, elongation, and termination. Formation of the initiation complex begins when the small ribosomal subunit recognizes and binds to a sequence of bases in the leader sequence on the mRNA. At the same time, the first tRNA bearing an amino acid matches its anticodon with the start codon, AUG. The large ribosomal subunit joins the small ribosomal subunit, mRNA, and the first tRNA to complete the initiation complex. The first tRNA fits snugly into the P site of the complex. The A site is empty. Elongation begins when a second tRNA with its attached amino acid approaches. The tRNA matches its anticodon with the second codon of the mRNA and settles into the A site. The first amino acid is transferred from its tRNA to the second amino acid by another enzyme. A peptide bond forms between the two amino acids. The joined amino acids form a dipeptide that is now attached to the second tRNA. The first tRNA leaves the P site. The ribosome moves down the mRNA to a third codon. The tRNA bearing the dipeptide now occupies the P site. The empty A site is ready for a new tRNA bearing an amino acid. The third codon is recognized by the anticodon of a third tRNA carrying an amino acid. The dipeptide is now transferred to the third amino acid, freeing the second tRNA. Because more than two amino acids are now linked by peptide bonds, the growing chain is called a polypeptide. The process of adding amino acids is repeated many times during translation as the ribosome moves toward the three prime end of the mRNA. Translation is terminated when the ribosome encounters one of three stop codons at the end of the gene. The stop codon shown here is UGA. A release factor recognizes the stop codon and settles into the A site. An enzyme releases the polypeptide chain from its tRNA by adding a water molecule. 
This frees the polypeptide chain, the last tRNA, and the release factor. The two ribosomal subunits dissociate from the mRNA and are free to form another initiation complex. Although we've shown only a single ribosome binding to a strand of mRNA, many ribosomes actually bind to an mRNA. A polypeptide is produced at each ribosome. In this way, several identical polypeptides are produced at the same time.